Continuing on from the last video, let's start getting Mavericks on this PC. There are plenty of guides on how to install OS X, but I'll give a brief guide on how I perform this. To begin, I needed to obtain some software. Let's start with the most easily obtainable, Unibeast and Multibeast for Mavericks. Unibeast is a software that transfers Mavericks onto a USB drive with the correct bootloader to create a bootable USB drive. Multibeast is a post-installation software that allows the user to install compatible drivers with the parts the user has in their machine to make Mavericks functional with stuff like the USB ports, Ethernet jacks, audio ports, and more. These can be downloaded from the Tony Mac website, but just a reminder that to download these programs, you need to create an account on the site. The other software I need is the operating system. The easiest way to obtain Mavericks is by downloading it from the Mac App Store from an actual Apple computer. The way I downloaded it, and I don't recommend doing it because it was a hassle, was using a copy of OS X Snow Leopard with other software from Tony Mac, downloaded it, and continued the rest of the steps from that OS. Using a spare USB drive that was at least 8 gigs in size, I inserted that into the Mac, brought this utility in the settings, and formatted the drive using the partition tab. I selected one partition, chose Mac OS Extended Journal for my format, chose Master Boot Record under Options, named the partition USB, and apply the new configuration. After downloading Unibeast, I ran it, went through the Agreements section, chose the USB drive I recently formatted to apply Unibeast, clicked on the third option for the Mac App Store Mavericks 10.9 since I'm using the most current processor at the time of the recording, click Continue and Install, and Unibeast does the rest. After about 10 minutes, give or take, the process was done, I now have a bootable USB drive of the OS X Mavericks. Before removing it, I dragged and placed Multibeast on the USB drive as well for later. With a bootable USB in my possession, I can now boot up my PC and install Mavericks. To make everything in the motherboard settings compatible, I first boot into the BIOS by holding down the F12 on my keyboard and selecting the BIOS from the drop down list. For your stock configuration on this motherboard, nothing really needs to be changed, but it's a good idea to check that the SEGA control mode is set to AHCI, or else the hard drive won't boot correctly. Other than that, everything looks good, the temperature is decent, and my processor and RAM are recognized so I can continue on. After restoring the motherboard, I hit the F12 key again to get the boot options, and chose the USB. From there, I get a boot screen that shows my USB with Mavericks on it. I hit enter, and then the next screen I get is the Apple installer. Going through the language and agreement section, I need to go to the disk utilities located under utilities on the menu bar, and do some last minute configurations. From this utility, I get all the drives connected to the PC such as the SSD and the USB drive. It's important to format the hard drive to the correct file system in order for the OS to work. So, if I were using a new hard drive, to format the drive, I would select my drive, go to Partition tab, under Current, I would choose one partition, choose the GUI partition method under Options, choose Mac OS Extended Journal under Format, and rename the partition Mavericks in order for the software to install correctly. After that, I would choose Apply and Partition. Since I'm making this video after I installed the OS already, I'll be installing this on an extra partition. After exiting out of this utility and selecting the partition or disk, whichever you prefer, the OS starts installing. After about 15 minutes, the installation is complete and is prompting a restart. To get back to the OS, I need to boot off the USB again because the custom bootloader wasn't installed yet. Booting off the USB, I now have the option to use Mavericks partition next to USB. After selecting that option, I get to the Apple setup page, which means I successfully installed Mavericks. Going through the setup process, I'm then greeted by the Mavericks desktop. Now that the OS is on the drive, I need to get the drivers for the PC in order to have a functional experience instead of glitching and freezing all the time. To do this, this is where Multibeast comes into play. Running Multibeast from the USB drive, I chose Quick Start and began a custom selection of the drivers. After looking at some of the guides from the Tony Mac website, I chose a DSDT free option because the one on this gigabyte motherboard works unedited. 
the driver starting with audio, I want the Realtek ALC892 driver and HDA enabler is selected by default. For this option, I chose a third-party SEA option. For network options, I chose both the Atheros and Intel drivers because I have both Ethernet ports on my main board. For miscellaneous and system, I just stuck with the default selections. Moving on, for my main partition that I use every day, I already have the custom bootloader Chimera installed, so I don't need to install it again on this new partition. But for anyone including me that's setting up a new drive for the first time, you definitely need this to start the PC. For customizable options, I went with the default selections and the boot options, while I included the 1080p display mode. For system definitions, this is totally optional to anyone, but for me, I chose the older Mac Pro model because I feel this PC is too big to be considered a mini. Lastly, for theme options, I chose the black toy MacBook for my main partition, but it's up to the user what they want. Before installing the drivers, I get a quick listing of them and where to install them. Keep in mind that if you have a similar build like mine, you want to make sure they have the Chimera bootloader shown in the listing as well. After clicking install, I had to wait a few minutes, but it was worth it to install the crucial drivers. After they were installed, I restarted the PC and did not need the USB to boot into OS X since Chimera was installed. From the desktop and checking the system info, I know the drivers were installed correctly because I can see all my specs. Now, I could say that I'm technically done because I have a functioning PC, but I wanted to update this to 10.9.2. To do this, just downloading the patch off the Mac App Store is the simplest way. For me, I normally grab a copy of the patches from the Apple website in case I need to reinstall them in the future. After downloading the patch, I can run it, agree to the terms and conditions, and allow it to install. After it installs and the machine reboots, I now have an updated version of Mavericks. Before I can start using the new version, I need to run MultiBeast again and install the audio drivers because the one downside to installing the OSX patch to a Hackintosh is the loss of audio after installation. But once the audio is back on, the system is updated and complete. A while ago, I built this PC and did the install process, but in that time, I found some ongoing issues with the build. Let me go over what I found. Starting with connectivity, I normally use an Ethernet cord to connect my devices to my home network. The same goes towards this Hackintosh, but as you know from the motherboard I picked, it has the capacity for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections with the added antenna. Unfortunately, the wireless and Bluetooth don't work with OS X and would require a separate wireless card using the PCI slot. Although according to the Toy Mac forums, the Bluetooth can kinda work, but it requires booting into safe mode at the Chimera boot screen, locating and deleting a certain .plist file in the system files, and rebooting out of safe mode. This is only a temporary solution because after two reboots, Bluetooth fails again and the .plist file returns. If I find any better solution, I'll either post it in the description or I'll make another video about it. Another issue on the lines of connectivity is regarding the two Ethernet ports on the back. After installing the drivers, both ports work, but I prefer using the Intel port because I found video streaming with the Athros port is unreliable. For display options, Currently the only option for a monitor connection is the DVI port. When using either the full size or mini HDMI, the system boots up and gets the white Apple logo. And then the PC shuts down seeing the the system rebooted. There hasn't been a clear solution on how to fix this problem in the forum, so I'm holding off on this fix. Personally, if I want to add more displays, I'll just get a separate graphics card. As for system updates, currently OS X 10.9.2 runs more smoothly on this machine than 9.3 due to stuttering and animation sequences in the later release. It isn't a deal breaker, but it's a little annoying. I advise to stay with 9.2 until a later version resolves this issue. The last problem, which is random, if I boot up the system with a USB in the top slot on the side of the machine, the system freezes up on the Apple logo screen, and then I get this screen. I don't know why it happens, but the easiest solution to the problem is not booting up with anything in the slot. Besides the problems I mentioned, nothing else hinders the performance of this PC and it feels like a good work machine. I can do things like video editing, gaming, web browsing, and more. I performed a couple bench tests using Cinebench and a free version of Geekbench. What I found in Cinebench was the dedicated graphics aren't great for hardcore gaming, 
but they get the job done for a simple build. And from Geekbench 32-bit version, this PC isn't any Mac Pro, but in a single-core test, it looks good, and even though it's a dual-core system and a 32-bit test, it can stack up to a first and second generation i5 processor. Overall, I enjoy this experience of building a system from the ground up and having an Apple computer experience without the need of buying an overpriced computer or having a dull setup in a virtual machine. Now that I've built this PC, I plan on using it to explore the operating system and services and what it has to offer in comparison to Windows. Before I end the video, I want to thank the Tony Mac website and community for helping me out with this build, as well as Bob Roche's channel, because without their guides, software, and videos, I will have never attempted this, and I suggest going to their respective websites for more information on the Hackintosh world. Anyway, this is Steve, signing off, and thanks for watching. Want to learn how to recover a deleted file? Check out Andy Richter's channel to find out how.